I'm in the I'm in the depths of Dad's basement again. So <laughs> when I have the I have my scan and cut down here, so it's a very rustic basement, but you know it does the job, and I have a nice space to work down here. And I um, I took a wall down a couple weeks ago. I think I told you that. And so I can like see all the way to the other end. I'll, I'll hold the camera up when I switch the cameras because I can see the, all the way to the other end of the basement now. It's awesome. There was a wall like, oh, just a few feet ahead of this desk. So it's been very nice to have to have uh, space and be able to see. <laughs> so, okay, well, just a second here. I'm gonna, hopefully everything's working. I'm like, I'm trying a couple of new pieces of equipment tonight. So hopefully everything works. Hi everybody. <laughs> so, and I'm gonna use my phone instead of my tablet because I forgot to bring my tablet down. So let me get, turn the banner off. So how is everybody? So we're gonna make some cards tonight. So I've been wanting to learn to make cards for a long time. And, and so the scan and cut, I saw this, this um, embossing um, procedure with, um, it was with uh, Julie Faye Van Balzer did it. Um, and I saw it several years ago and I just never, you know, I never did it. I bought some of the stuff for it and I just never did it because I was a little nervous about it. I was having a little trouble with a couple things and I just, you know, I just never did it. So um, here not too long ago, I just decided I'm going to learn how to do this. And I've been starting to learn to make cards. So it's been real fun. So here's my little cards. I made a couple of different ones. So here's um, one of the original samples I showed you, the green. And then I put a little, I'll show you how I did, you know, I did a sentiment on the inside and one. And we're going to make this little, this little uh, ribbon here tonight. And then I put a little piece on the back. Okay, so these are what they call A2 cards. So this is like um, when it's folded, it's five and a half by four and a quarter. So it's not a real big card, but it's a nice size for mailing or for Christmas. Hi, Lynn. <laughs> I told Lynn I needed her, her here for card making moral support. <laughs> and then I made um, some red ones the other night. So I did some on the red card stock with some green backgrounds on it. So I thought that one turned out really cute too. Put some green little. Um, rhinestones on it. And I've tr been trying out some of the embossing powders. So I had um, several different ones. And um, I've tried out like this one's, I don't know if you can see it on the camera very well, but this is a glitter one. And it's really pretty. I'll, I'll uh, put it down on the, when I turn the camera down a little bit better. And then this one was a gold one with, with glitter in it. Now I'll warn you, these glitter ones, if you don't like glitter in your house, you won't like these because it gets glitter everywhere. So I like the regular embossing powder a little bit better. <laughs> and so I did most of mine with regular embossing powder. And then this was a new color I got. I thought was really pretty. This one's called copper. So that's a really pretty color. This is just regular embossing powder. So we'll talk about all the stuff we're going to use tonight. And um, so I'll go ahead and turn the camera down and I'll show, I can show you better because I got all the stuff laid out over here. So just a second. So hopefully everything's working okay. I had a little trouble just a little bit ago. I think the internet blipped. So hopefully it won't do that again. And I need to change my camera. And my microphone, okay. So hopefully you can still hear me. And we're gonna get down here and maybe get turn my computer a little bit so I can see this a little better, okay. So what we're, let's talk first about what we're gonna need to use to make this card, okay. So um, you might be able to see the glitter a little bit better if I hold it under this one. Can you see the little glitter on this on this embossing powder? These are really pretty, but the glitter does is very messy. So if you don't like glitter, this would not, I would not recommend the glitter because there is glitter everywhere in my house now. <laughs> it's all over my area down here now. But the silver was really pretty. And then the rest of them are regular ones, but I really do like this, um, this copper color. I thought that was pretty. So we're going to use some green um, cardstock tonight. And I've got some stuff cut, but I wanted to show you what we're going to use. So we're going to use um, some cardstock. So I've got, um, I've got green cardstock that we're going to put the card on. And I've got red that we're going to make the background piece on it, the little background piece here. And I've got a couple of them already cut so that I didn't have to cut them all in front of you. 
I know you aren't doing it right until you use glitter. And the thing is, there's just glitter everywhere. So, so if you like glitter, I mean, the, the glitter is really pretty. I really do like the glitter, but it is messy. So just be aware <laughs> if you use glitter, glitter embossing powder, you will have glitter. <laughs> so, okay. And we're going to do a little shadow. Um, Okay, I've been having a little bit of issue with the internet, so I'm hoping it's okay. It's been bleeping a little bit on me here. So I may, if I if I bleep off for a second, it, I'm sorry. Um, we're going to use the black for this little shadow layer here, and I'm going to show you how to do that in the Scan and Cut. And then this little ribbon is actually in the Scan and Cut. The Joy to You and Yours is actually a stamp. So I think, I don't think I'm freezing up anymore. So I might, I, I just blipped. So I'm hoping it doesn't happen too often. I do apologize. Things, I never know what's going to happen here. So it's back on the wire and I hear this little noise. And then I know that the internet probably had a, um, had a little bit of a, um, the signal um, slightly um, blipped. So that was what it was. So if you hear if you hear me say there's a blip, you may see me freeze for a second. But I've got the wireless too, and then it kicks over to the wireless. So, all right. So here is my here is my uh, silver one. All right. So we've got I've got some green cardstock, some red, some black, and then I um, I pre-stamped this joy to you and yours, and we'll make that little ribbon out of there. And I also pre-stamped the Merry Christmas. So I got some stamps and I'm learning to stamp. So these are the stamps I use. And these were from um, Joann's. So I got these for, at Joann's and it had the joy to you and yours in it and the Merry Christmas. And then it has all these other really cute stamps in it. So this was a nice set. I liked it very much. It has the Santa and, and some little teddy bears and a little winter scene. So this is the one I'm, I used for those stamps tonight. Okay. And I don't know if there's a name on it. I don't think there's a name on it. It's just the one that has the Santa and, and the, the little teddy bears, but they had it at Joann's is where I got it. Um, let's see. So we're, that's our cardstock. So I've got a couple of the pieces already cut here, and then we're going to cut the rest in the scan and cut. And then I like to buy, how do you know what kind of ink to use? Okay. So the, I'm really learning this, Cindy. So what I have for, you mean for stamp ink? You mean the stamp ink or the ink for the um, for the scan and cut, the pens? I'm going to talk about the pens in a minute. The stamp ink I use is dye ink. I'm learning. I mean, so dye ink is what I used for these, okay? Black dye inks. And it's, uh, I got, I have Memento, memento Dewdrops, those little teeny little um, stamp pads, and they're great. Yes, for the inks. So I have the Memento little dew drops, and those work really great for small stamping. Okay. How do you get the stamping so straight? Um, I have a really cool device that I that I Lynn recommended to me. It's called the Misty, and it's a stamping platform. So it literally teaches you how to, I mean, it really makes you be able to stamp quickly. I, I don't, I can't, I've never been able to use a block. <laughs> so I will show it to you before I, I go off tonight. Okay. So I have it back here, but it's underneath something. Okay. So, um, yeah, so Lynn's explaining, Lynn's no, Lynn's no, Lynn knows more about, um, card making and inks and stuff than I do. So she just, um, put up a little post about that. Okay. But the dye inks are what I use for most of stamping. Okay. So that's what I use for these. Okay. So of course we, we have our card stock. Now I like the paper. You can cut your own cards, um, your own card bases, but this one was one that I just bought. It was an A2 size card base. So I'm just going to use one that I bought. Okay. So this one was already pre-cut and pre-folded. So I just folded it in half. So we're going to use that one tonight. All right. So let me put these little pieces over here and get them out of the way. And we're going to need these in a minute. 
Yeah, the gal, the gal lives in Illinois. She's from the Quad Cities that invented the Misty. She's really cool. Okay, so I gave everybody the design for this, and it was up on Dropbox. So if you're not, if you if you haven't gotten the design, if you go to the first post on the Sew Along with Jan Facebook page, it's under it's in the Dropbox under embossed um, heat embossed card or heat embossing. Okay, so it's there. And um, you can download the, the design. So it's going to cut and draw in the same design. So I made it that way so that it makes, makes it easier for cutting and stuff. So we're going to draw. We're going to cut first, and then we're going to draw. Okay? So here's our cardstock. So then the other things we're going to need are embossing pens. Now, these are embossing pens. And there's a couple of different sets here. I got these at Hobby Lobby, and these are Ranger embossing pens. And so far, these have been my favorite ones. There's a black one and a clear one that come together. And then there's two gray ones that come together. And the other gray pen I have it here has a really weird tip on it, and it doesn't seem to work well in the machine. So I wouldn't recommend that one probably for um, – the scan and cut you could probably draw with it but not use it in the scan and cut because it's got a real thin tip on it so i don't have that one over here but i have the this gray one which i really like actually so this is my favorite pen is the gray and the black because you can see where you're drawing okay so the this one here is clear and um it's a little harder to see where you can draw you can see it on the paper but I've been using these colored ones and it makes it easier. So I got all of these at Hobby Lobby and they're Ranger Embossit pens. Okay, so that's one of the things we need. And then you need some embossing powder. So I've got a couple of colors here. I'm going to use, I'm not sure what color I'm going to use tonight. So I've got my, my gold and my silver and these are Ranger and I got these at Hobby Lobby also. And then this copper is really pretty. So I might make another copper one tonight. I like the copper, okay? So th those are <clears throat> embossing powders, okay? And, whoops, and you're also gonna need an embossing a heat tool. So this is a, a heat tool. Um, I just bought a new one, it's called the Wow. Um, and two speed, it's really nice because it's got one for hot and one for cooler um, heat in case you're gonna needing to dry like paint or like um, like watercolors, okay? So this one's got two two speeds on it. Um, so far, I've really liked this one. Uh, my old one um, died very suddenly. So had to get a new, new embossing gun quite recently, like a couple of days ago. <laughs> okay, so now to do this in the machine, we gotta have a pen holder. And this has been one of my um, problems with that's why I haven't done this yet, because I, I I struggled with the embossing part with because my heat tool was not very good. But then I was I've been also um, struggling with the pen holders. So brother has a universal pen holder, which we have used in the past. And it works fine, especially. Um, yeah, Lynn says, don't get the cheapest embossing tool or heat tool that you can't find. This one is the Wow. Um, she has a Wagner or a Milwaukee. And I bought the Wow. And then the other one that's good is um, the Chandler is another good one. And then none of them are expensive. This was like $25. It wasn't that expensive. Um, but the heat, so th these pen holders are a little frustrating because... I've always struggled keeping the pens in here. So if you are using the, the Brother Universal pen holder, okay, you need to use a little tape to keep it in there. For some reason, I just blipped off here. Where did I go? Second here. Oh, there I am. Sorry. For some reason, my phone's decided to leave me. Okay. All right, so is everybody still, whoops, everybody, I think I'm still live, aren't I? Yeah, I think so. Cool. All right, so um, 
if you're using the universal pen holder with these Ranger embossed pens, they are slightly tapered, which is a problem when it comes to this, this pen holder. So what I have learned is if I take some tape, um, either I use the Kimberbell tape sometimes, um, you know, the blue painters tape works. The other tape that I found that actually works quite well is this, this is that bandage tape, you know, like give you when you have your blood drawn or whatever. Um, this works pretty well and it's a little sticky. So I just wrap a little bit around the barrel of the pan before I put it in and then it seems to work better. Okay. So I use this stuff and this works pretty well. Um, I have been struggling with the pen holder wanting to wiggle on me. So like if I do this and go to put my pen in, okay, so this is the universal pen holder. I'm going to make sure it's really loose and I can drop my pen down. And with that stuff on it, it's hard to push in. I might put just a little bit too much on a second. Let me try just taking a little bit of it off. Um, I have to kind of figure out a happy medium for it. And I think I'd put just a little bit too much on. Let's try a little bit more. So these have been a bit of a problem for me for doing any kind of pens. The pens that work the very best in this universal pen holder are the, um, and it's mostly where the taper is. Can you see it's bigger down here? And then where I need to put the, the tape is where that taper is because that's where it has to hold it. Okay, so I can get it down in there now, okay? And then you turn this thing, lift it up, turn it, and pull it down. And then that's in there pretty strong. So I put the tape up at, towards, the, towards the tapered end of this pen, okay? And so it's in there pretty strong now. And that will work and that will stay in the pen holder. So what I've done, let me just take this out again, okay? I put the tape up around the area that the pen starts to kind of taper in just to fill it out so that it's more cylindrical. Because what works really well with this pen holder are the Sharpie markers. And I generally am using Sharpies. So I haven't had a lot of problems with that. But um, the Sharpie markers are very cylindrical on the bore, on the barrel of it. Okay. So this has been, you know, a little bit of a, of a, frustration for me is trying to get these pens to stay in here. So what I did is um, there, there, there's Lynn actually found it online through a friend that there is a gentleman online that makes, um, that makes pen holders and he's from the UK and um and these are universal pen holders also. Okay, so this is the one from the UK. And thank you very much, uh, Mary Ann. I'm sure she's here tonight. My friend Mary Ann happened to already have one of these and she brought it in for me on Friday so I could try it out. And this is an amazing universal pen holder. So I'm gonna use this tonight so you can see, this really holds the pens and you can put any pen in here because of the way it works. It actually adjusts and, and holds the pen down here and up here. So it holds it in two places so that it won't um, so that it won't slide around in the pen holder. So and my favorite pen holder or my favorite pen is actually the gray one. So I'm going to use the gray one tonight and we're going to use this pen holder. OK, so the name of this is this guy's from the UK and it's called 3D. I got it written down, so I won't. So I can show you 3dfunprints.com. Okay. And there's a pen holder bundle that you get the universal pen holder that holds most of the smaller pens. And you can also get the one that holds the big Sharpie, you know, the bigger Sharpie markers that are pretty good size that are probably about as big around as my pinky. This is the one that just holds those great big markers because we've never been able to use those before. So you can get this bundle and, and we figured with the Euro and the conversion, it was about, 
um, $40 for the set ish, you know, around 40 to $45 for the set. Okay. And that's with the shipping and it, and the shipping wasn't terribly expensive from the UK. So Lynn has written down the website for you in the comments, but this is what I'm going to use tonight because Mary Ann, thank you so much. She made my day Friday. She brought me this, this pen holder because I was very worried about the universal pen holder. And yes, it does work. And I will show you that it works. We'll, we'll draw this twice and I'll put one in with that. Okay. I mean, in fact, I think I'll put it in with the black pen so you can see it. All right. But we're going to try one with the, both of these. And if you give me a second here, let me get the, the tape and I'm going to put it on my black pen. I like the darker ones better because you can see it <laughs> when you go to, when you go to, um, so what I do with these is I kind of, with this tape, I kind of figure out about where it's going to be. And then I put the tape about the place where the barrel starts to taper. And that seems to help hold it in place. Okay. Like this. So I've got it kind of in there where the barrel starts to taper and to use this one. So we'll put it in this one too. And I've got it open and then you put it down. Okay. To the, so that the tip hits the little base here. All right. I got, got my camera tip just a little bit. There we go. Um, where it hits the base. And then I'm going to push up on this little thing and screw it over and push down real hard so that it stays in there. And I think it's pretty good feels pretty good. Okay, so it's in there pretty good. So I'm just going to leave that one in there. And we'll try drawing with that one. And then I'm going to put this one in the other the, the other universal pen holder. And this one has like a little screw cap that you unscrew and they said not to unscrew it all the way off. So you just kind of unscrew it so that it's loose. And then you drop the pen down in here second here. I don't think it's quite loose enough. There's little, little things that come in. Second, I need to move my camera over just a little bit. Um, there's little things that, that hold it on the inside. And these are 3D printed. You know, those 3D printers are awesome. They do so many things. And you unscrew it and see how the little things come out when the pen goes in there. And then I'm going to push it down. And then I'm, it's got this little clippy thing that's sort of like our little saddle on the other one. And I'm going to push it down until it hits that little clippy thing. And then I'm going to hold it there and I'm just going to screw this cap down. Make sure that it stays down and see it's gripping it down here at the bottom. And then you screw it down until it's tight. And look, this thing's not going anywhere. This pen's not going anywhere in here. And then you just take the little clip off. Just take the little clip off and set it aside. And that's the universal pen holder that, that is from the UK. And this thing just works great. I just was so impressed with it the other night. So we'll, we'll draw with both of them though, because you can do it with the other, with the other, um, with the other one too. So, all right. So I got my two pens ready. Give me just a second and we're going to get, we're going to draw on the green cardstock. I might have to get another piece over behind me. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is cut. Hi, Jackie. People are still coming in. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Okay, so I have kind of a new map. So this is actually, I, I didn't have my old, old um, standard map. I finally bit the dust. So I'm going to use a new map, but this is the low tack because I figured it was going to be too sticky for the standard. So I'm going to go ahead and just use this one. It's like I have to wake my scanning cut up. I was going to tip the camera up so you can see. I can see all the way to the back of the basement. Now look, there was a wall about a foot ahead of me here, maybe 18 inches. And now I can see all the way to the back of the basement. It's And it's so much lighter now. <laughs> I can actually see what I'm doing. It's great. Okay. So I loaded my map in and let's go ahead and put in, I'm going to, we're going to use the green cardstock and I think I might be able to get two of these off of here. See how white is this? Yeah, I think we can. 
So we'll, we'll draw this twice, once with each pen, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to put this piece of paper on here. And this is pretty new mat, so I'm not going to use my brayer, okay? But this is a low tack. I don't usually use a low tack, but I was afraid that the other one would be too sticky. Okay, so now I'm going to bring up that design in the machine. So let's get a little closer to the machine here. And I'm sorry, you're gonna get a little bit of a glare probably because I can't quite get high enough. There we go, that's better, okay? So I'm gonna go in here and let's go get our design that I gave you. I'm gonna, I've got mine on my stick. So I'm gonna go re retrieve it from my stick and it's right here, single tree. And I'm gonna click okay. Now, this is in two pieces right now, so I am going to group this together just to move it around or at least select the whole thing together so that I don't move, I don't lose it as I'm moving around here. So I'm going to go ahead and move it up a little bit closer to the left-hand corner where my paper is, and I'm going to click OK. Now, what I did when I made this design for you is I made it um, so that one piece draws and one piece cuts. And so when you tell the machine to cut, it's going to only cut. And when you tell the machine to draw, it's only going to draw. Okay. So let's hit okay. And I think I'm pretty happy with this. I think that'll be okay. And I'm going to go click okay. So we don't have a lot of stuff we need to do. And I, then the next part we'll do, we're going to do some stuff with the machine. So let's go ahead and get this done. So we're going to, I'm going to cut first. I want to cut first. So let's cut. So see now all that comes up is the square. You probably can't see it too well, but it's just a square or the rectangle, I should say. And I've got my blade in here, my universal or my um, standard auto blade. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click start and we're just going to cut the card out. So this is the inside part of the card that I'm going to do the embossing on. So I'm just cutting this part out right now. And we're going to put another layer behind it and we'll cut that out of a piece of red paper. So it's thinking here. Oh yeah, I think I can get the other one out of this paper too. Okay, so we'll take this off. I'm just going to take the rest of it off and leave this on where it is. I don't want to move it. And sometimes I don't take it off. I just, but I just wanted to get this so I wouldn't, I knew there was a little sliver over here. So don't move this, leave it right where it is because we still have to draw, right? I just wanted to get it out of the way. And I think I need a new blade. Have you seen that I've got a little piece over here? We'll have to fix that in a minute. Okay. So I just got that out, out of the way. How does it know what part to cut? Okay. So what I did, Jan, is in the software, I told the machine what to draw and what to cut. You, you set the type of, of thing it's going to do in the software and save it that way. You cannot do that in the machine without, like, removing things. So I could have just used those two things and taken one out and put it back in. But if I set it in the software, I can tell it I want it to be a drawing line or a cutting line. Okay, so that's what I did with this one. Drawing line or cutting line. All right, so this piece in here, just so you know what size it is, is five inches long and three and three quarter inches wide. Okay, so this is the inside panel of our card. So now I'm going to draw. So let's go ahead and try, let's try this one with the universal pen holder. And that feels pretty strong. So I'm going to go ahead and just put the, my standard universal pen holder in, that my brother one. Okay, put this down, maybe. Okay, and then flip the little flipper down. I got my pen in there. And now I'm going to go up, back up here. Okay. And I didn't move this. I just took the outside piece of paper off. And I'm going to please draw. So now, as you can see, all there is is just the tree. Okay. Now, I do have my draw pressure turned up a little bit because I've been finding that I don't get quite enough coverage with the embossing pen unless I turn up the pressure a little. So I've got it on two and I've got my speed at three. So that seems to work the best for me is just have a little bit more pressure for the drawing. And then I get a little bit better coverage because you need to have good coverage for the embossing. Okay. 
So let's just go ahead and see how we do with our black pen. I'm going to hit start. And I'll put this down here and let you watch it draw. So let's see how we do. And if it doesn't um, show real well, if it looks like it's not really well um, covered, then you can draw it again. Just draw it again before you take it out. And that's what I've learned is that sometimes I just have to draw it again. Now, this one looks pretty good. This one looks like it covered pretty good, see? Now, this ink does not dry very fast because it's for embossing. So I'm going to take this off, and we're going to emboss. And then we'll draw with the other pen holder so you can see. So I'm just going to move some things around. I'm going to tip this up. And this is a piece of cardstock, okay, that I folded in the center because I need to catch my embossing powder. And let's see, what color do I want to use? I think I'm going to use this copper. I like this copper really well. So here's my copper. Got this at, at uh, Hobby Lobby. Now, technically, just so you know, if you are embossing with rubber stamping, they recommend you use this little bag, and it's called an emboss. It's like, um, it's an anti-static pad. But I found with the pens, I don't really need it because it you're not touching the paper much. It's only in the in the machine. So I have not been using this for the embossing with the machine, but I do use it when I use my stamps because you can also use embossing pad, uh, embossing ink and embossing powder with stamps. So this is an uh, uh, anti-static pad. So you may need this. Okay. And this is just a piece of scrap um, cardstock that I'm going to use to do this. Okay. So now I'm going to, I got this drawn, and you can really see where it is, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open this jar of embossing powder. I'm going to hold it over my paper. And I'm going to sprinkle it on. Lynn says it's better to use typewriter paper. And I, I guess I've always used cardstock because that's what I usually have around. And I'm just going to... Let it sit on there, and then I'm going to look. See, it grabbed all that all that embossing powder, and it looks pretty good. I'm going to give it. It needs a little bit more up here on the star, so you can always add just a little bit more if you need to. Okay, and I also have a little. Got to find it here. I have a little, um, just some little paint brushes. If I see some embossing powder that is in the wrong spot, I can always emboss it a little bit, or I, I can always brush it away a little bit from my piece. But I don't, I haven't had to use the um, anti-static pad with the pen. It doesn't seem to need it, but it does work better to have a little bit extra pressure. Okay. Is that pretty cool? All right. So we're going to lay that aside here and let's go ahead and dump the rest of this embossing powder back in to well, you want to make sure somebody said it's a pretty, pretty um, thick. Well, if you don't have, if you don't have it covered, it won't emboss beautifully. Okay, so you need to have it completely covered, and that looks actually really good because it's completely covered my ink. So that's the important part. You want it completely covered. All right. So this is where the magic is. This is so fun. Okay. Oh, okay. For the moisture. Well, because, because what they, I've never had any trouble doing, doing this at all. And they, they, I've never seen anybody do that, Lynn. So I usually use um, the anti-static pad with my, with my, um, with my stamps, but this one, this just doesn't seem to work well with the anti-static pad. Okay. So here is our design and we've got our embossing powder on it. Now, we need to run the embossing gun. Oh, it's an old school trick. Okay. So here is my, my, my heat tool. And I'm going to turn this on, on on the high setting. And I'm going to hold it up and let it warm up just a little bit. The other thing I like to do is this gets hot. Okay. And I like to take a clothespin and grab my paper with the clothespin so I can hold it so I don't get my... I don't get my fingers too hot, too close to the heat. And I'm sorry, this is a little noisy. Okay, 
So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit on the back. I'm just going to kind of go over the back a little bit, warms it up a little bit, keeps it from warping. And then I'm going to turn it around. Sorry, I got to get it turned around here. I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to start embossing. And pretty soon you're going to see, can you see it starting to turn? Can you see the color starting to turn? It, it's kind of like magic. And it just starts to turn color turn a beautiful color. Okay, got a little bit over here that didn't turn. But isn't that pretty? And don't over emboss it. Once it turns colors, you know it's done. So look at the, isn't that cool? And that's the copper. It is so cool. So you can really see it if it, it when it turns. You can really, really see it. Now I see that there's a little spot over here on the corner. I'm not sure. If you have a little place, let's see if that one, I might have missed that. Yes, it's the ah moment. Isn't that cool? But there's a little spot right here on the on the edge. I don't think, it might not have just in, it just may not have grabbed the, it might not have been thick enough on this little edge. There's just a teeny little edge that didn't go very well. And I don't think it embossed, grabbed any more embossing powder, but we'll try it again to see. Because I've noticed that every now and then if I if I have a problem, I just add just a teeny little bit more and then I just go over it again. So let's see. But, and you always want to cover up all the embossing powder before you turn on the gun. Okay. So it's the ink from the pen that you are drying? No, it's actually what embossing powder is is oh i think there was now maybe not that little spot is just a little bit not covered but it's not bad okay it's not covered um what embossing powder is it's like it's like teeny teeny tiny little pieces of plastic and you're actually melting it so it melts and it, what it does is it sticks to that ink the ink um grabs it and then it sticks to the ink and then you you um melt the plastic. So it's pretty cool. Okay, so there's there's the first one. So that's the one we did with the universal pen holder. Okay, just the standard brother one. So let's do another one. And we'll do one with the with the new one that I just got. So I'm real anxious to Marianne was so kind to let me borrow this while um, I'm waiting for mine to come in. So I'm going to take this one out of the, so I won't stick my fingers in the ink here. Put the cap back on it because I'll probably stick my fingers in it. There we go. And then let's go get this new one. So here's the new one. Okay, we're going to try this one. And we're going to drop this one in. Same way, it just drops in to the machine and click the little button. Actually, you know what? We need to, we need to cut again first. That's true. It is an embellishment opportunity. Yes. This is neat, but I don't have a Lynn. Oh, <laughs> well, you know what? Lynn is around. You, she can help you. Okay, so just a second. I got to find. Well, here's my pen holder. So we're gonna have to cut the other card out. So let's cut the other card out first. Hi, Marianne. We've been talking about you. Did you hear us? I'm trying to find my green paper. Here it is. Okay. So we're gonna cut out the second one. I'm gonna load my mat back in. I'm just going to pull off a couple of these little stragglers here. And I'm going to pull this down a little bit, this one, because sometimes my machine doesn't like to cut real. I think my blade needs to be replaced. So it wasn't cutting too well on that one corner. All right. So what I'm going to do, this is about an inch down and about an inch in. So I'm just going to grab this whole thing and pull it down. So let's just pull it down. And I got it all selected yet. And let's just pull it down to about in here so that it will cut better. I think it'll cut better there. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Lynn has a whole a whole craft store and stamping store, I think, in her house. So, <laughs> okay. So I've got my I've got my paper on here. I'm going to select, and we're going to we're going to cut first. I like to cut first if I can cut. All right. And then 
Put this down so you can watch it cut out. I've got it stuck on my mat. And I'm going to hit start because I moved this one down a little bit. It's thinking. Has to adjust the blade. Okay, so it's going to cut this out. And this one I can leave. This one I, this one I think is stuck down enough. I think it'll be okay. We'll go ahead and leave it alone. And then we'll take it off at the end. And now we're going to draw. So this time I'm going to take out my, my blade and I'm going to put the new pen holder in. And drop that in. And this is the gray pen. I really like this gray pen. And then we're going to go up here. Sorry about the little light. I've got a light behind me that is just a little bit glary. And then I'm going to tell it to draw. And again, I set it to the pressure of two. So it gives me just a little bit better coverage. And I'm going to go ahead and draw this. So let's hit start. And I'll put this down so you can watch it draw. So this is going to be the gray pen. And it, it is just a little bit lighter colored. So it's a little harder to see. Let's see. This one I think we'll do in, let's do this one in silver. I like silver. After I started adding a little bit of pressure, I've noticed that I don't need to um, redraw it again. But if you think you're not sure if you've got enough ink on here, just go back and we'll just do it. Just go back and re recut it before you before you move it. Just go back and redraw it and hit start. And I'm just going to draw it again just to make sure that it's well covered. OK, so there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, and. Sometimes you have to, like when I've done some of these with stamping, I've had to stamp it twice to make sure it's well covered and you get good consistent coverage. So, so we're doing the, oh, yeah, yeah, so see that's a little bit better covered. Okay, so I think that looks good. So let's go ahead and remove this from the mat. I'm just going to push up on the mat a little bit and take it off. And just don't stick your fingers in the, in the, in the uh, ink, okay? And then I'm going to unload that mat. And I'm just going to push this up. And here's my second one. We're going to do the same thing. This time, let's just do, can I watch later? I got, uh, oh, <laughs> yes, you can, Cindy. It'll be up on Facebook and on YouTube. Okay. So this time I'm going to try silver embossing powder. This you can really see really well because it's lighter. So let's go ahead and use some, some uh, silver embossing powder. And I'm just going to sprinkle it on. And you want to have it heavy so that you get good coverage and you get everything covered. See, I missed a spot over here. Okay. I think I missed a little bit up here on the top of the star. Oh, yeah, that looks better. There we go. So we got all the, all the lines covered. Okay, and then I'm going to put this back into my jar. Okay, Let's get this out of the way. But yeah, this is like teeny tiny little pieces of plastic, and so you're actually melting it is what you're doing with this. Okay, so let's do this one and see how this one looks. So I'm going to grab my little close pin so I can hang on to it. Oh, this, this is actually one of those, um, one of those um, heat, I use it with my heat press. It's like a, like a, what do they call them? Teflon pad or whatever. What do they call them then? These things. It's a craft mat. Yeah, this is, this is one that I use with my, I use these with my heat, um, with my heat press. So it's like a Teflon mat that I put over the top so that things don't burn the shirts. So I really like this and it, and it also cleans up really easy. So I just laid it down on my table. Okay, so let's do this one. So I'm gonna turn this on the high heat and warm it up a little bit. Teflon pad, is that what they call them? And I've got my little, my little clothes pin on here. Okay, warm it up and then I'm gonna start by turning it over and we're gonna just do a little bit on the back. Warm it up a little bit, and then we're going to turn it back over. 
But yeah, it's the same. That I use it for my heat press. Oh, there it's turning. Watch it turn. Isn't that cool? I was just totally amazed at this when, it, when I did it the first time. Kind of keep your gun moving. So cool. Okay. What do you think? I think we did it. So what do you think? Yeah, because this is what I use. I put this over my shirts and stuff when I'm using my heat press. So what do you think? Isn't that pretty, that silver? And the silver that has the, the, um, the or I should say the glitter in it is really pretty too. All right. So there are two. And like I said, I use the, the regular universal pen holder and it worked fine, but you're going to have to tape these pens in there. Okay. Because the, those pens are tapered and they do not work well without some tape and they still will slide on me. But I found that this brown, you know, the stuff that you get for bandages works the best because it seems like it grips it a little better. But this universal pen holder is the bomb. This thing is awesome. And thank you so much, Marianne, for letting me borrow it. I have ordered one. Lynn and I ordered them. Um, they haven't come in yet. So you just unscrew this to take the pen out just so it's loose enough. Take the pen out. Okay, and then this little clip goes back on like that. Be ready to use it again. So this is the 3dfunprints.com. And this is the, I got the pen holder bundle. This is how much it is in euros. So we figured out it was about $35. And then I got some extra of these little clips because I figured I'd lose them. And with the shipping, I think it was about $45 for the bundle. Okay. Non-stick craft sheet. Yeah, non-stick craft sheet. Uh, mine happens to be the ones that I get for the um, for the heat press. So non-stick craft sheet. But yeah, Ranger has them. I've seen them at Joann's. Joann's has them. And they're rolled up in a little tube. Okay. So they work really well. Take some crystal gems from the scrapbooking area and clear colors and stick them down to the tree. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. We're going we're gonna to do that at the end here. So thank you so much, Marianne, for helping me. So this was this I think is my favorite pen is this gray one, um, and I really like the black one because then I can see. When you do the clear one, it works just fine, but it's a little harder to see where you're doing. And let me tell you, when you use this one with the embossing powder, you can. It's a really wow when you put the embossing powder on there, and all of a sudden it's just all stuck to the tree. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. So any all of these work. These two come together. And then there's two gray ones, but the other gray one has that thin tip. So you'll have to use that for hand drawing. Okay. So these three, I really like all of these. They work really well. I tried another one, but I don't like it as well. And it's called, I actually use this stamp ink, but it, I don't like this pen as well. It's called Versa Marker and it doesn't work as well. I liked these Ranger ones better for the scanning cuts. So, okay. So those are drawn and ready to go. So this one, see, we got a little, we got a little problem over here. It didn't quite cut through, did it? So I'm just going to give it a little trim. Give me a second. I'm going to put my glasses on. I have a little trouble on the one corner of my mat for some reason, and I think my blade needs to be changed. So there we go. Just it was just a little sliver. So there's our two fronts of our cards. All right. So this is where Jan gets a little bit nervous, you know, because I'm pretty new at this. And we're going to do some more cutting. Okay. I can I know how to do the scan and cut stuff, but the card stuff is new, you know. Okay. So now I want to get another piece for a background. And I want that to be red. So I have a couple of them already cut here. And we're going to cut this in a minute too. So I want another piece that's a background piece like this. And it's just a little bit bigger so that it just shows around the outside edge of the card, just to give it a little bit. Have you used embossing in the machine? Have you used, I don't understand what the question is, Cindy. Okay. Oh, the embossing that brother has? Yes, but it's totally different than this. It's not heat embossing. It's a totally different method. So it is embossing, but it's not the same as this. This is just totally different. Um, and so this is going to be my little layer that I'm going to cut. 
Now that little layer, we're going to make it on the machine here, is no, no embossing powder in the machine, but the embossing kit that they have for the machine is um, a totally different method, but it's also called embossing. So yes, I have used that and it is fun. It's region embossing and line embossing. All right, so I'm going to load my mat back in here. We're going to make that little shadow layer and I'm going to make it out of red. I'll make two of them. Since I have two card fronts, we'll make two. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and load this paper on here. And this is just, um, this is a little thicker cardstock. Um, this is just red cardstock. Okay, and what I like to do then is this, my little layer on the outside, since the inside was five by three and three quarters, I'm going to make, get rid of that. So I gave you the inside layer, but the outside one we need to cut then, and I'm going to make that one. I'm so sorry about that light. It's right behind my head. And no matter where I go, I'm trying to get high enough so it won't be as bad. But it's behind my head and, it, and there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get my square in the basic area. And I'm going to make my outside piece is going to be four inches by five and a quarter. So let's make the height. I need to touch this little button right here first because that allows me to change these without them going together. So it's not an aspect ratio, okay? And this is cardstock. Um, this is, yeah, this is cardstock and this is a heavier cardstock. I think it's a heavy weight. So it's like a 110 pound cardstock, this red. So I think it was a nine. Yeah, I think it's the, the heavier kind that I happened to buy, so. All right, so we're going to make this um, five and a quarter inches tall. So let's go up, whoops, up five and a quarter. Oops, I overshot it, didn't I? Five and a quarter inches tall, and we're going to make it three, or I'm sorry, four inches wide. So it just needs to be a little bit wider, okay, like that. And then I'm going to tell it to cut two. So let's just tell it to cut two and hit set. So there's my two and I'm going to move them. I think they should be okay there because they're not down too far. Like I said, that little corner has been causing me problems. So I think those will be okay there where they are, where my paper is. And I'm just going to click okay. And I'm going to click cut. Okay. And I need to put my blade in. So here's my, just make sure there's no nothing on my blade. I don't think so. I just cleaned it the other day. Okay. And I am going to cut out, this is going to be my outside layer that is sticks out from in front of or behind my card. So let's go ahead and cut these out. I'm going to cut two of them. And I had a couple of them already cut for this card. But then we'll have the little layer that will go behind here. I think I'm going to do this copper one. I really like the copper. It's pretty color. I just got that one. That um, I just got that embossing powder. I hadn't tried it too much before. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this off. Now, see, I'm still having that little trouble on this one corner. I'm going to have to get a new blade, I think. It's just a little bit dull, I guess. So we'll just give it a little trim. I can see exactly where to trim, so it should be fine. So I apologize for that tonight. I've been using my scanning cut quite a bit lately, and obviously I need a new blade. Okay, so let's just pop this off of here. Okay, so here's the two little pieces of red, and see this is going to then be, put this back down, Then this is going to go behind our tree. Okay, as a little shadow layer behind the tree. All right, so we'll get those up here. And then where's my other one that I did? It's here somewhere. Okay, we're going to do that one tonight. Okay. Now, we need to cut, make a couple more pieces because I liked this little, I wanted to put a little, like a little ribbon on here. And this little ribbon is in the machine. Okay, 
but I didn't want to draw it with the drawing pen because I thought it was a little too big. Um, so I wanted, I, I used my rubber stamp. I made my, I used my stamp here that says joy to you and yours. To, and I stamped it. So this is the other thing that's cool. If you, if you know how to stamp and you do some stamping, you can stamp on a piece of cardstock. Look at there. Okay. And we can put this on the mat and then we can take our design and put it around there and cut it out and make it work and, and cut it out on the scanning cut. So what I'm going to do, i got to go find my little thing here. This one is the white. So this is going to be the smaller one. And it was the little tag. And it's in, let's see. i got to see if I can find it. So it's, on, it's in the machine. I think it's just in the basic patterns, these basic patterns here. And it was B-A- a171 so i think it's way down towards the bottom because there's a whole bunch of designs in here all different kinds of shapes and i was like oh well i have a tag i don't have to buy a die so here it is it's right here right here 171 and then what i want to do is make it i measured how big it needed it to be so i'm going to hit this button again so that i can change this independently the sizes and I want to make it 3.25 inches wide. So it just needs to be a little narrower. 3.25 inches wide. Oops. I, there we go. 3.25. And then I want to make it 0.6 inches high. So it's just a little over a half inch high. So we're going to go down and make it skinnier. So 0.6 is what I made it. Like that, so that it made this real nice, and, it, and it, it went right around the stamp so nicely like that, okay? So I just pre-stamped that because I didn't want, I, I'm not a stamping teacher by any means. I am learning. So let's go ahead and hit set. And I'm going to now scan because I need to get around my lettering here, so my stamp. So I'm going to scan so I can find my letters. So it's going to scan. So as you can see, if you like to make cards, you can, you can use a scan and cut for all kinds of stuff. And if you do stamping, you can actually cut your stamps out with the scan and cut, um, scan or the, the direct cut feature, and it's really cool. Okay, so now up here on my screen is my, here's my stamp that I did, my words. Here's my design. So I need to get it a little bigger so I can see it. So we're going to go ahead and edit. And then let's go zoom in so we can see what we're doing with this. Okay. So I'm going to scroll over here and let's go up just a little bit. And so I, now I can really see where my design is. These arrows here move the pay, you know, move your design or not the design, but the um, the picture around so you can see where you're going. This these actually move the design. So I need to go over this way a little bit and maybe up a little bit so that it looks more centered on my little tag. That looks pretty good. Yes, if you're going to do multiples, you could do multiples too. That's fine. Yeah, Lynn said you could fill the whole page and do a whole bunch of these. And that's what I did before because I cut out a whole bunch of them the other night. And I just left one that I was going to do for tonight. But I, I did like four or five different ones um, on a piece of cardstock. And I just stamped a whole bunch of, um, of these on a piece of cardstock. And then I just cut them all out at the same time. So yes, you can, multi, you can multitask. All right, so it looks pretty good. Might need to go up one more bump. What do you think? I think that looks pretty good. So then I'm happy with that. I'm going to click OK. And now we're going to cut this one out. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to hit OK again. And I'm going to cut. All right. And then we're going to hit Start. Right. So yeah, so... Like I could have stamped, that's what I did is when I made all these red cards the other night, I, I did like four or five of them and stamped all of these and I cut all the tags out at the same time. So it was really fun. 
So there's our little tag. So let's see if it cut okay. I think, see, it likes to cut in the center of the mat. It doesn't like the, that one little corner. So there we go. See, there's our little tag. Let me pull this off. I'm just going to push this up and give it a little, it just pops right off. So there's our little tag. Isn't that cool? Okay. So now we need to make a little shadow layer for it too, because I'd like to put a little shadow of black behind it. See, I put a little shadow of black behind it. So this is how you would do that right in the scanning cut. So I still have that design up here and I'm going to put some black paper on my, on my mat now. Okay. I've still got my design up here. So here's my design. Okay. And you can make um, layers. You can make like outlines. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the editing screen and I'm going to hit edit. Sorry, I have a clock down here and it's going to strike. It's going to strike seven. Sorry. <laughs> and that is that little design is selected. So now I'm going to object edit that design. And I'm going to hit this little button right here that looks like a, it looks like an outline. I'm going to click on that. And what it does is adds an outline outward from the original design. And I am just going to leave it at the um, default setting, which is just a very small amount, as you can see. This is what I used here. So you can see that little teeny bit of black out there. Okay. So I'm just going to leave it at 0 0.06 and click OK. But now I want to get rid of the original design because we only want to cut the outline. I don't need the inside part. So I have to see which one I've got here. I think that is the original design. So I'm going to, I've pulled it down and I'm going to click the delete button. I just want the outline. So let's zoom in so we can make sure we got the right one here. And if not, we'll do it again. So I'll be able to tell by looking at it because what it does is it squares the corners off just slightly. Yeah. So that's, that's the, that's the outline that we made. Okay. So now I just need to scan again to make sure I know where my black paper is. So this is a lot of fun. I I've been learning a lot about card making and paper and, all kinds of stuff and so then i'll show you how to assemble this card but this embossing was really fun i've enjoyed the heat embossing a lot and um after i found that new pen holder i'm so happy because it's so it, it's much more reliable okay so now i gotta find the design it's on behind that black paper somewhere <laughs> there it is <laughs> just just poke around you'll find it okay i'm just gonna pull it up so that it's up here and doesn't waste all my paper okay and you can see the red, you can probably see the red line around it. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut that piece out. Hit cut. So I just used the little, the little tag we made, the original little tag we made, and made the outline off of that. So it's going to be perfectly the right size. No, I have not. I don't. I haven't heard of that. I'll have to try that, Cindy. Thanks for the suggestion. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take this off, and there's our little tag, bay, our little like shadow layer. Isn't that cool? There's our little shadow layer. Okay, and I'm going to unload my mat. So the design I gave you was for this uh, this you know, inside piece and also the tree okay so all of my pieces that i have cut here so I'll, we'll talk about the sizes here for just a second too okay this is my get these pieces out of the way okay so here is my pieces so we cut a couple of these red ones out i'm going to lay one over here i'll use it later so this was the piece that I, I'm going to use for the layer. Okay, so this is, so the inside size um, is five by three and three quarters, but that one I, I gave you in the tree design. Okay, and then I made the outside one four by five and a quarter. So it's just a little bit bigger. Okay, 
So I have that for the front, and then I have these pieces. I have one of those bigger ones, the one that's four by five and a quarter, that I'm going to put on the back of the card just to give the back of, make it prettier than just plain old white. So I'm going to put it on the back of the card. Okay. And then I wanted a shadow layer for my sentiment. So I stamped my sentiment on a piece of white, um, white cardstock with my stamp and I pre-stamped this. And then this is the same size as this one. So this one is three and three quarters by five. Okay. So you could cut this out with the scan and cut also. Okay. So that, but I just stamped this one instead. So this is just a black ink. All right. So I, these are all my pieces that I'm going to put my card together now. All right. So this is going to be the front. This is going to be the inside and this is going to be the back. And I've got my, um, it's not, it's called the dreaming tree is what she said, Lynn. It's called the dreaming tree. She said that they have card making designs. So I'll have to go look. You'll have to go check it out, everybody. Thanks, Cindy. That's great. It's always nice to find places that you can go to find nice free designs and stuff. Okay. So now we're going to put this, we're going to assemble this. And um, I'm learning a lot about all kinds of stuff. Okay. So this is, I'm going to turn my camera up just a little bit more so you have a little, you see a little bit more. Um, I've been learning a lot about like tape runners and, you know, all the gadgets that you need to make a card. So I needed, I needed a good tape runner. Okay. And this is called the easy, this is called the easy runner grand. And I love this because I know a lot of you that are watching tonight are left-handed and I had another one that was not um, very ambidextrous. It was really right-handed. So this one works in either hand, just so you know, and it rolls really freely. So what we're going to do is I want to apply this piece to one of the red ones for a shadow layer. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay this down and I'm going to take my tape roller and I'm going to run some tape around the outside edge, fairly close. And then I'm going to run one up the middle, maybe. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So there's my, oops, I got a little piece showing here. So we're just going to hold it back. There we go. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to center it on my red paper. And I just have to kind of, it's kind of an eyeball thing. Lay it down. And there is my red layer for my tree. Okay. So I'll do that one. And then I'm going to do the same thing. This is my sentiment that's going to be on the inside of the card. So we'll do the same thing here. This has been a really fun learning process. So I, you know, I've always wanted to learn to do stuff like this and I've crafted most of my life, but this is something I've never learned. And I've always wanted to learn to stamp. And I've always, I've had very poor results and I'll show you my Misty. The Misty really made life easier because it helps you learn to stamp. So we're gonna do the same thing here. I'm just going to center this on this card. And press it down and there's my inside of my card okay and then i'm going to take my card my actual card base and this is one that i bought so this one was already cut if you were going to cut a card base and make it yourself you would cut it i have my little piece of paper over here you would cut it five and a half by eight and a half and then you would score it in half at four and a quarter and fold it Okay, so that's what this is. But this was some that I had purchased, so I already had one. And I'm going to put this piece on the back of the card just to make it prettier on the back. So I'm going to turn it around to the back. This will be the front. And I'm going to put some tape on this one. And we're going to put this on the back. My tape roller is going to be, be naughty. Every now and then, tape rollers get naughty. Have you noticed that, Lynn? They just get naughty sometimes. put another piece down through the center. Sometimes if I don't put it in the center, they kind of poop in the center. Here we go. All right, so I'm gonna make sure we're on the right side. This is the front. This is gonna be the back, okay. 
So now I'm gonna center this on the back of my card. Just to make it prettier. You don't have to put anything on the back of the card. I just like to, because it makes it prettier. Okay, so there's the back of my card. Okay. The other thing I like about this tape runner is this one has cartridges to refill it. So all you do is open this up and this whole cartridge comes out. You just pop the other one in. It's so much easier. So it's very easy to use. Okay, so there's the back. So we'll turn it over to the front. Oh, the name of my tape runner. I got this. Um, Joanne's has them online. I got, I got, Miami got this one on Amazon. Easy Runner Grand. And I really like it. So if you're, if you're, this is very lightweight also, and it's a little smaller than some of them. And it has a lot of tape on it. So I don't know if you can see it. Let me open this up. I have a little trouble getting them open. But this is the cartridge right here. And this comes with like 150 feet of tape. So some of the little ones, you know, the little handheld ones, which are nice, only come with like 30. So you're running to the store to get tape all the time. So this one's nice. And it wasn't expensive, maybe $25. It wasn't that expensive. So I really, I'm really liking it anyway. And it works in my left hand, as you can see. Yep, Jan is using, and yeah, Joanne's online, haven't seen it. Oh, yeah, they have them online on at Joanne's, but not, on, and I got these this one on Amazon. They had a little deal that you got the cartridge and the gun together. They had an extra cartridge. It was just a little special. So it was about the same price. Okay, so now we got our front of our card. Okay. I don't buy too much from Amazon. Lynn gives me, gives me a hard time. So every now and then I do. And then we're going to put the front of our card on. So let's go ahead and turn this over. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to tape this one on so I can get my tape runner to go. I'm kind of getting close to needing another cartridge. So I've been making a lot of cards. And I've been having a lot of fun. I've learned, I love to learn. And this is something I've always wanted to do. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to do this this summer. Okay, so then we're going to take this one. This is my copper one. Okay. And we're going to center this on the front of the card. On the card, the white card base. And push it down. Okay. That looks nice. And then we're going to open this one up. And I want to do the same thing with my sentiment piece. So I'm going to put this and we're going to glue this one. So I've been doing a lot of reading about different materials and things you need. And so I've, I've been spending a lot of money, having a lot of fun this summer. I just needed a little bit of learning. I like to learn. Okay, so get that centered on the, the inside. Okay, and there is the outside, inside, and the back. Okay, so now we've got, we've gotten that far. So now we need to put this together, our little tag. So this little black piece is going to go on the back of the little, the little ribbon like that. So with just a little bit of a, okay. Yes, how thick they are. These are not very thick, even though I don't have real thick paper. Uh, Lynn suggested to be careful because you don't want to have to, um, you don't want to have to pay extra postage for your cards. This is not, even still is not very thick because I don't have real heavy cardstock. Yes, it is the little things that make us happy, Marianne. You are absolutely right. I've just, I've had a really good time working with this. So, okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a little piece of this tape on the back of my white for my ribbon. And then we're going to center this on the piece of black. So you're just going to kind of eyeball it. Like that. Oops, I think I got a little off. Now, if you get a little off, the tape doesn't stick that hard at first, so you you can still get it off, okay? Yeah, I even made, Tim's birthday was in July. I even made him a birthday card. I think he appreciated the card because I that was one of my first cards I ever made. Okay, so there's my little ribbon. So I got that on there. 
okay? But wouldn't it be fun to make cards for your friends and, and for your family? And most of the time, you're probably going to hand deliver those. Put them with their gifts, and it's a special, it's a special thing, okay? So now we're going to set this aside for a couple of minutes. And then we're going to put it on two in a different way. But I want to get my rhinestones. So I want some rhinestones. And I'm now these are the self-adhesive kind, and they do work pretty well. But if you're not, if you're worried about them coming off, just go ahead and take a little drop of like um, craft glue. But these really stick really good. So I'm just going to use them with the stickum that comes on. So these are red rhinestones that I picked up. And I'm just going to kind of, I got my other one here, so I kind of know where I put them. And I'm just going to pull it off and I'm going to stick these on because I need it. It needs ornaments, my Christmas tree. So welcome to Christmas in July, right, guys? Have to have, have a Christmas card. I do a lot of Christmas stuff in the summer. Okay. Oh, those 3D ones are really cool. I know they have this uh, Dollar Tree has lots of card making things. Okay, so we're going to stick this one here. I'm just put. I'm just kind of randomly sticking them on. Okay. Let's see. Grab another one here and put it over here. I'm just kind of following where I put them. I kind of liked them where I had them before, so get them kind of roughly in the same place. And let's see. This one needs to go down, maybe here, huh? About here. I like that copper. Isn't that pretty? And let's see, I think I put about eight of these on. So let's go down to this one, put one here. Yep, Marianne makes lots, likes to make cards, don't you, Marianne? Marianne's the one that had the had that universal pen holder. And oh my gosh, it's so cool. So she's very excited to get it back because now she knows what to do with it, don't you, Marianne? <laughs> it is awesome. Okay. And then I'm going to put this one over here. Put this one over here like that okay so there we got some jewels on there okay what do you think i think that looks pretty good i could have put this one over a little bit further but that looks pretty good i have eight on there one two three four five six seven eight okay all right so then there's some jewels on there and i think i got these just so you know i think i got these at walmart they had a huge pack of these so there was like thousands of them in all different colors and these are just the right size for like little ornaments on this tree so figured i could make and i did green ones on this one because i changed the red cardstock so yep all right so then we're going to put this little piece right here and i want it to be like popped up so that it's not laying flat can you, can you see it's popped up and there's some little foam things. So we're going to put these little foam things on the back. I've got these little round ones. So we're going to turn this over and put a couple of these little foam foam things on the back. So it makes it three-dimensional. Stick a couple of those on. You can see I have glitter everywhere. I've been playing with some of the glitter embossing powders. Okay, so we put that on there. And there's like little sheet, there's little, little sticky, little things that re reveal the sticky underneath. So I have to, and I think I got these at, um, you can get little squares too. These happen to be circles, but you can get these like at Hobby Lobby and different places. Okay. And then I want to put it kind of like across the bottom here, kind of center it in the middle. Uh, and I, it's just barely covering the tree trunk like that. I'm just going to press it down. And there's my card. What do you think, guys? These were so fun. And the stamping, like I said, the stamping was something I was just very, very intimidated by. So there's one with the copper. There's one with the silver. So I've got a whole bunch of Christmas cards made already. I've been practicing. I really like these. So I thought, well, these would be pretty that I could just send these at Christmas time. Most of my Christmas cards will be to, you know, people that I'll hand deliver them to instead of um, mailing them because I don't mail much for Christmas cards. But aren't those pretty? So there's a whole bunch of them here. I've got more. Oh, here's another one. I've got more that I can put together now. And there's some, some red ones and some green ones and all different colors. And some of these, now you can see some of these are a little thinner than others. Okay. Like this one. And then this one was just a little bit thicker. 
Okay, so after I increase the pressure, can you see that the coverage gets a little bit thicker so then you can see it a little bit better. So I really like that. And this one was a little thicker too. And this is the that that one with the glitter in it. Okay. And somebody wanted to see the misty. So let me show you this. And I've always wanted to learn to stamp and I've never, I've always had a lot of problems. So this is the Misty and it's a platform for stamping. So what you do, you let, turn, scoot these over a little bit. This opens up like this. And then there's a little pad in here and a little magnet and it, it's magnetized, okay? And what you do is when you, if you wanna stamp something, you'd set it in here and you could set it down in the corner and just kind of put a little magnet on it, okay? And then you would take your stamp. I'll just take this out so you can kind of see. Let's say this one, I wanted to just stamp something that said, uh, wishing you a joyous holiday. So there's a little stamp here. And it says, wishing you a joyous holiday. And I would just kind of align it down here where I want it. Put these up here, sorry. Where I wanted it, I would align it in the area that I wanted it. Oops. Okay. Get it all aligned. And then they stick to the door. And you just press this and see it picks it right up. And then you can readjust your card. And then it, it's over here on the door. And you ink it over here. And then every card, if you wanted to put them all in the same place, every single card then you could just mass produce. And you have you can ink and then put the new card in and put it down. And so you just rub it, you just rub with a little device. It's so cool. And it's just, it. you, you have to go look up and watch some of the videos on it. Cause I watched videos before I got one, but now I can actually stamp. I'm actually, can you use a hairdryer to heat up? No, the hairdryer is not hot enough. Cindy, you would have to get a embossing tool. The hairdryer is not hot enough to warm it up. But anyway, this is the Misty. This is my stamping, stamping platform. And, I, and I'm actually learning to stamp now because that's something I've always wanted to do. And I am so, where do you put the ink? Oh, you, you stamp it, you put it on the stamp, Denise. So like, um, I'll grab a little ink pad to show you. I probably wouldn't do this in purple, but it's the one I grabbed. So here's my little, here's one of my little mementos. And you put it on the stamp. So like, if I lay this over here, the stamps over here and then I would just open this up and I would put the, the, the ink on the stamp. Okay. Actually, I'll just do that and I'll just stick it on a piece of cardboard stock in here. So this is a, per, this is purple. So I'm just going to put some stamp, some ink on here like that. And then let me find a little piece of card stock. Here we go. So we'll put this in here. Okay, put this in here like this. I think it'll hit the cardstock. Yep, so here, here it's on the cardstock. I got too much stuff on my table, sorry guys. Okay, here's my little stamp. And then I gotta get this little tool for pressing down. So you just kind of press it like this, go over the top, and then pull it up and like that. And there is wishing you a joyous holiday. And if you're not happy with how dark it is, like if you want if you don't think it's dark enough, then I can go ahead and I can take my ink pad, leave this in the same spot, ink this back up again, and flip it back down and it's it's still in the same spot. And then I can ink it again. Because if I did this with a stamp pad, I with one of the blocks, I would never get it done. There we go, it looks much better, you see? And then if you're doing like multiples, if you want to do this on a whole bunch of cards all in the same place, you can get it all done. And it's, it's what's this thing called? This thing is called the Misty. And it's a stamping platform. And um, it's from a place called My Sweet Petunia. And they're from Illinois, actually. They're from the Quad Cities. So I ordered mine and you can get them from there. They're just awesome. I mean, I think it's just the most awesome tool and I, I've always wanted to learn to stamp and I knew I'd never learn if I didn't get the right stuff because I never had before. 
but this is really cool. And this is the standard sized one. And then there's a smaller one. I just have the standard sized one. But isn't that cool? And then you can just clean your stamps with, um, I have like a little chamois cloth that I clean my stamps with and put them away. And um, you can clean this off with, there's some cleaner, or you can just use a soft cloth for this as well and clean this up, but it's so cool. So that's my little Misty. National card educators, yeah. So there's a lot of people, if you watch if you watch some videos, there's a lot of people online using this Misty um, because it it makes stamping accessible. I mean, I've, I've, I've struggled and I've tried to stamp and I just get frustrated and I just stop. And so now I've got all kinds of stamps. <laughs> And this is a really cool set. So if you want to do some Christmas cards, I just loved this set. And I got this one at Joann's. They had them on sale for like 30% off. So I think I got it for like $10, this whole set. And there's a bunch of cute things on it. So, but anyway, that was, uh, that I'm, I'm learning. This has been very, very fun. And Lynn has been very, very um, supportive of me learning how to do this. Um, I've tried and tried to learn to do card making and stuff and never had good luck. And now I have a friend that knows how to do it and is encouraging me. So I, and Judy is also coming and helping us. Uh, so we're all learning together and doing all kinds of new things. So it's been really fun. I just needed to get away from the sewing machine for a little bit every day. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera up. Are there any questions? Did that help everybody? Wasn't that a cute project? I just really enjoyed doing this. So this is the one we did. Hold this up again. So this is the one we did tonight. Yes, you can stamp in the same plaid. Yes, so Lynn also has a friend named Cindy Ann that is an expert card maker. So she has another person. So, And, and it is really fun. I, I've really enjoyed it. Um, it's something I think cards are useful. I think you can send them to people, but this is something that I thought would be fun with the scanning cut. So you can use the scanning cut. You can use, there's all kinds of other things. And we'll do some other stuff with some of the other things that I have with fabrics and stuff. Cause I've been die cutting for years. And so we're going to do some stuff with the die cutting machine too. Um, I've done a couple of, this is this, this card here is not quite finished. This is the one I have finished, but this one here is a die cut card. So the look with the little Santa Claus. So this is my one I'm working on. I haven't got it quite finished, but this is a die, a die and all these little pieces. Um, you cut tons of little pieces and then you glue them together and then it makes that Santa. Isn't he cute? And I really enjoyed that one. And then I've been doing some stamping with the embossing. So like this is a stamped card that I used a rubber stamp and stamped with the special ink and then put the embossing powder on it. So there's all kinds of different things you can do. I'm learning, so I love to learn. So this was a fun project. You can find the design on the Facebook group, So Along With Jan, and it's in the drop boxes in the very first post at the top. So I gave you this design with the smaller, with for the inside part of the card, okay? So you can, you can do this yourself. Go get yourself a little bit of embossing powder and a, in, a, in a heat gun and just give it a whirl. It's really fun. And I saw originally, you know, this has been years ago. I saw this originally and I just wanted to do it. And I thought, hey, that's really cool. But I just didn't get around to it. So it was the time. So, okay. So next week we're going to be doing um, some more Christmas in July. We're going to do a software class and we're going to do the, the little um, ornament. Um, we're going to do the little ornament for the, it's a little gingerbread man. So we're going to make an ornament in perfect embroidery pro. So, so next week we'll do a little more Christmas. And then in August, we'll start up with, with um, the August bench buddies. And also we're going to do the, start the Halloween um, home is where the haunt is pillow. So, and in fact, I did a video for that today. So I've got both the videos done too. So thank you everybody for joining me tonight. I hope you enjoyed the, the little, it was, this was a little more off topic, but it was fun. And I thought it would be something fun to do with the scan and cut. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. And Lynn put a bunch of little places in there. One of the places on the, on, in the comments about how to get the pen holder. We'll talk a little bit more about this if you want me to. And um, 
also some of the other websites that we were that we were talking about. So, all right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good evening and we'll see you next week. Bye.